and welcome. I'm attorney Tina Patterson, principal attorney at Patterson Justice Council here in Detroit, Michigan, where pursuing justice is our business. We help everyday individuals protect their property, have their rights respected, and leave legacies to their lineage. We do this because we believe the law should be used as a force for liberation, not oppression. With that in mind, I'm coming to you to highlight a very important topic, Black lawyers and Black history. As we know, February is Black History Month. This designation is important because it recognizes the accomplishments, achievements, and contributions to history by Black people, which historically have been erased, dismissed, or denied. However, we can overcome this campaign to shadow our history by spreading the light of truth and talking about it, about who we are, what we've done, and how we can use it to positively influence our future. So as we near the close of Black History Month, I want to highlight three lawyers in Black history who have contributed much to the fight for civil rights in the past, as well as a new awareness of the injustices that we still wrestle with here in this 21st century. So first, I will start with one of the originators of the legal battles and strategies of the civil rights movement in the early half of the 1900s, and this is Mr. Charles Hamilton Houston. Uh, his legal battles and strategies have effectively defeated Jim Crow laws around the country during his time. Uh, so enormous were his contributions that he earned the title, The Man Who Killed Jim Crow. And he mentored perhaps the most famous Black legal icon this country has ever known, the Honorable Thurgood Marshall, who later became the first African-American to sit on the United States Supreme Court. Uh, Hamilton's life and legal career is well documented in this book here. It's called Groundwork, Groundwork by Dr. Jenna Ray McNeil. After serving in the segregated United States Army during World War I and experiencing racial discrimination, Hamilton Houston graduated from Harvard Law School, one of the premier hard schools, excuse me, one of the premier law schools still in this country today, where he invited notable global Black leader Marcus Garvey as a speaker, documenting his deep commitment to racial pride and equality. Hamilton Houston later served as dean of the Howard University School of Law, where he mentored aspiring Black lawyers, including Thurgood Marshall. He left Howard in 1935 to serve as the first special counsel for the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. In this role, Charles Hamilton Houston created litig litigation strategies to attack racial discrimination policies in housing covenants and segregated schools, and he argued several important civil rights cases before the United States Supreme Court. Through his work at the NAACP, Houston had a hand in nearly every civil rights case that reached the U.S. Supreme Court from the years 1930 all the way through the landmark Brown v. Board of Education decision of 1954, which was argued by Thurgood Marshall. And even though Charles Hamilton Houston passed away in 1950, his influence was still felt years later through that landmark decision, one of the most important in the nation's history. Uh, the second lawyer that I want to talk about is one of my personal legal heroes, the late federal judge Damon Jerome Keith, former senior judge of the United States Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. The, the Court of Appeals is the second highest court in the nation. Judge Keith from right here in Detroit, Michigan, documents his life and legal path in the book Crusader for Justice and the challenges that came along with being African-American and fighting for basic human rights and respect. Keith, a former World War II Army veteran, recalled the discrimination he encountered while in military uniform, as well as even later in his life, the discrimination he faced in judicial robes. He also tells the stories of his most famous judicial decisions that demolished segregation in educational institutions, police departments, and major private employers, including the Detroit Police Department and the former Detroit Edison, now known as DTE, a Fortune 500 company. Most significantly, Judge Keith, while sitting on the federal bench and issuing a decision upholding the civil liberties of anti-war protesters, was personally sued by the then President of the United States at the time, Richard Nixon. In a unanimous decision, the United States Supreme Court ruled in Judge Keith's favor. So despite being attacked by the most powerful person in the nation, perhaps the world, the President of the United States, Judge Keith came out on top. Judge Keith also issued a very famous decision against the policies of the former President George W. Bush's administration, which coined the phrase, 
democracy dies behind closed doors. And finally, I want to highlight in our contemporary 21st century, uh, Michelle Alexander, author of The New Jim Crow. This book highlights the broken criminal justice system in this country and how through mass incarceration, past racially discriminatory practices in housing, education, and employment are given new life through using criminal prosecution and incarceration, primarily negatively impacting Black people. The new Jim Crow is packed with evidentiary material that shows the depths of the brokenness in the system and serves as a catalyst to anyone seeking justice for a better world. A quick caveat about that book, I read it back in 2011 or 2012. I was in the middle of law school, already in deep dive, nose dive in the books. And the book was recommended by a law professor of mine. And although we were all tired law students and so many of us did not want to read another book, this was one I picked up immediately and devoured and have never, the material has never left my mind. It's very, very uh, well written and uh, it will light a fire under you for justice for sure. So these are just a few, uh, but these stories of accomplishment in the face of adversity and victory in spite of victimization are not told to depress or deject, but to inspire and influence us to reach for greatness that is within our grasp, no matter the circumstances. All these books that I've just uh, mentioned to you, I've read cover to cover personally, and these stories and so many others like them inspire me every day to continue the work of empowering citizens who have long felt disempowered and vulnerable in their own communities. I draw strength from the fights of the past, knowing that with the right spirit and the right strategy, we can win and live the lives we deserve, which are just lives to enjoy and explore freely without the weight of societal burdens and limitations controlling our destiny. Each of us truly does have the power to change the world. Black History Month is a time to look at the past for the myriad of examples that came before us and learn the lessons that these examples teach us to continue to shape our future in the now for the better. So thank you very much. I will leave a list of these books in the description of the video. If you did like it, please share and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Thank you.